I Welcome see. to another edition of the Mark Ballot Show. I have a very special guest by the name of Lisa Stacy. She is running for clerk of Somerset County uh, Circuit Court. Um, how you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I have some questions for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, why you decided to run for office in this particular office at that? Well, you know, when someone asks you, I think everything happens for a reason. So I was at a meeting and someone just brought it up, you know, have you ever thought about running for office? And I hadn't. Mm -hmm. um, never been in any um, position where I had to be elected to be in it. Didn't know anything about the process. Um, had no idea what it took or what was all involved. Mm -hmm. And it was just a thought. So it just, you know, went over and over in my mind. And I thought about them like, so why not? So. I said, I, I think I was up for the challenge, and I decided to go ahead and, and jump in that ring. Wow. And then the clerk of the circuit court, um, I think because I'm currently, you know, actually working with the department, under the Department of Justice, so it was kind of like a natural um, gravitation to that position. Hmm. Okay, what are your duties uh, as a clerk? Um, the clerk of the circuit court, uh, oversees the office that performs many of the administrative and clerical duties for the circuit court, including um, record keeping. Mm -hmm. And other duties include recording of um, deeds and collecting taxes and fees based on property transactions. Um, it also includes issuing licenses for um, fishing, honey, sell liquor, marriage, and they also perform civil wedding ceremonies and process. Uh, passport applications. Hmm. That's what circuit court does, y'all. That's what the clerk of the circuit court does. The clerk does, of the circuit court does. <laughs> His though. office does. That's what goes on inside. Yeah. Cause a lot of people want to know uh, what goes on inside there besides people getting time and going to court to, for bad things. It's also some good things about circuit court, too. Right. All your legal, um, you know, like property transactions and, mm -hmm. like I said, the licenses that you need to do certain recreational things like fishing and hunting, um, sell liquors, like I said, and, and marriage ceremonies. So it's, you know, a lot of people on the trail were asking me, so actually what does the clerk do? Yeah. So I was able to actually, yeah, enlighten them and inform them of actually what the duties were for a clerk of, of court. Very um, serious responsibilities you have there on your hands. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are your qualifications? Um, actually, I received my master's of business administration through an advanced degree program, where you you had to have a certain uh, undergrad GPA, mm -hmm. so the aptitude had to be there, because mm -hmm. the advanced program where you didn't have access to your professors mm -hmm. that often. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to finish that. I finished at the top of my class uh, with dedication, commitment, and um, diligence. Um, I currently use my leadership skills and my organizational skills to run a financial services business out of my home in Princess Anne now. So this is something that, you know, it's a good um, background mm -hmm. to, you know, running an office or running a, a clerk's office hmm. specifically. So I, I do that. Right now, serving the Del Marva community, so it's pretty much you know I I did it as an extension of or another avenue for serving you know my community. Mm. Good luck. Okay, what are your uh, priority priorities for the position if you're elected? Yeah, I would use the best practices um, to ensure that all stakeholders that are involved in the operation duty duties and service at the clerk's office, actually give the best customer service possible. And I will, you know, would be transparent, mm -hmm. um, accountable, and a representative of the community that I serve. And I would love to initiate some community um, engagement opportunities to build stronger, um, longer lasting, reciprocated mm -hmm. relationships with the people in the community. Y'all hear this? It's very serious. Okay, how will you um, how will you accomplish and prioritize the goals since you are elected for this position? Um, if I'm elected, I definitely would use the um, latest and the best technology, manpower, and office procedures to make sure that the documents are processed 
um, quickly, efficiently, and accurately. Mm -hmm. I will optimize my relationships with the community leaders here to um, have them inform the public of how the circuit court or the, the clerk's office can serve them best. Mm -hmm. um, in my work experience, you know, with my own business and even in, you know, prior employment, I've demanded the highest in customer service for myself and those around me. And mm -hmm. this is something also that I would, you know, bring into office. That's good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, any standout stories or conversations that you have or have uh, on the campaign trail? Yeah, you know, it's a lot. I mean, a lot of people don't realize I had a, a friend from high school kind of put a post saying, um, he knows it takes a lot just mm -hmm. to run for office. Um, and I just didn't realize how much. It's almost like having a, a full-time job, literally. Um, for those on a bigger platform, it is. It is literally a full-time gig running for office. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot involved. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of your time. It takes a lot of your energy. It's almost like the blood, sweat, and tears that... You know, you hear people talk about when you take on an endeavor like this. Um, but it is definitely a learning experience. So in talking to people everywhere I go, because I'm always, even when I'm not literally dedicated to campaigning, mm -hmm. I'm always talking about the campaign. And I see people that I know and those that I don't, and I, I speak speaking to everyone. So I have a friend who, she's young. Mm -hmm. um, early 30s, she has uh, two young sons in mm -hmm. the school system. So we were just conversating, and I said, um, are you going to vote? She said, no. I'm like, wow, are you registered to vote? She said, yes. I said, so why aren't you voting? And she said, well, I just know the, who's running. Mm -hmm. I said, so what does that take? <clears throat> Is, do you realize that I am running for office and you know me? She said, well, yeah, that's that's good. I'll vote for you because I know you and you're a good person, but I don't know anyone else. I said, but you should because you are 31. You have two young sons in the school system mm -hmm. and the decision that decisions that the elected officials make affect your daily life. That of yours, your mom, um, your siblings, your children, everyone. So you should be involved, not just because I'm talking to you about the campaign that I'm running or the election that I'm running for, but you just, in general, should be involved. So it was surprising to me that she was registered mm -hmm. and just didn't do anything with that. Mm -hmm. She didn't get involved, didn't know who was running, um, and just happened to bump into me and we had that conversation. So mm. that was... Um, like a lot of people mm -hmm. who are just so disenfranchised with the whole voting system and the election process and, you know, the candidates and people in office. Mm -hmm. um, another story, I was stepped out to speak to someone, and this is an older gentleman. Um, he was also registered to vote. Talked to him about my campaign, and he said, oh, I don't vote. And I'm like, okay, so you're a senior. You are registered, but you don't vote. And, of course, I wanted to know why. And he said, because my, my vote doesn't count. And I'm like, whoa, mm -hmm. yeah, it does. It <laughs> counts a lot. I said, just one vote could change the tide. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm even listening to um, some other candidates talk. And I can't remember who exactly it was, but one person literally won their, their office or their uh, position by five votes. Just wow. five. Just five votes. They won by five votes. Whoa. Yeah. So you can't tell me that, you know, as an individual, that your vote doesn't count. Mm -hmm. That's your voice. So anytime you don't vote, your voice is not heard. Your voice is not, you know, considered because you just took your voice out of the equation mm -hmm. completely because you didn't even make the effort. So if people aren't looking at who's running, if people aren't trying to find out the information or what the people are running are about, if people feel disenfranchised like it's not going to work, then it definitely won't. Mm -hmm. But if you get involved, if you try to get information, mm -hmm. if you look at, you know, 
what some of the candidates are doing, where they're going, what they're saying. Um, if you actually go to use your vote, mm -hmm. it will work. It does work. I mean, that's how everyone gets elected. It's just how the process works. So I, I hear these stories over and over again. Well, it's not going to matter. It doesn't count. It does. So like I said, one vote can change the tide. So I, I encourage people to just get information. Mm -hmm. I encourage people to um, be concerned, be involved, do your research, um, just make the effort, take mm -hmm. some action. Do you know? Because you don't know who is running or anything about them, um, that shouldn't really stop you from trying to attain some information. So, like a lot of people um, seem to not care about what's going on in their own communities. They don't care to vote. I don't understand that. I'm registered to vote, and when every chance I get, I make sure my vo my vote be heard. You know what I'm saying? Make sure I go ahead and do what I'm supposed to do on my end. It's your power. It's your voice. Yeah. You know, and don't, you know, people fought hard for certain groups and certain demographics just to be able to vote, literally, mm -hmm. and to be totally disengaged and not wanting to take the time and then then you can't complain if you don't take action if you don't make an effort when something passes or a law or regulation or policy and you totally don't agree with it mm -hmm. you really can't complain because, can't say nothing right really. Really can't <laughs> because say yeah you, you know you that's why you say your vote counts for right real. you rest on your laurels and you really didn't you know get involved to try to you know use your power Okay, um, any thoughts you would like to um, leave here um, for the audience to any shout outs or anything like that? Yeah, I um, just want to encourage people to get involved, to um, make the effort. It is worth it. It is your life. And like I said, when, you know, people make these laws or, or like the officials mm -hmm. pass certain laws. And again, if it's something that totally goes against what you would like to happen um you know there's processes to have people in place that will look out for your best interests or your common interests that you have mm -hmm. and you know you just have to be concerned enough because this is your life and it affects you and your family your children um your job like i say your places of employment um your everyday life things that you have to abide by because Absolutely. it is law um <clears throat> Now, I definitely want to give a shout out to my campaign team. I mean, I have like the best people that have stepped up to the plate and done an awesome job. This is new to me and it's new to everyone that was on my team. Wow. So um, my campaign manager, Tia Real, she stepped up and she has learned. She has been receptive to getting advice. She's been receptive to talking to people, trying to figure out how do we do this, how we run um, this cam campaign. She has put in tireless hours. Uh, That's amazing. She works, gets hey, off Tia. work. <laughs> yeah, she works, she gets off work, and she takes care of her family, and then she's doing campaign stuff. She's, you know, if I ask her to do something, it's <laughs> like she does not hesitate to um, work on it. I don't, she, I don't care if she's worked all day long and she's tired and has ran with her family. Wow. She'll be up in the middle of the night, wee mm -hmm. hours of the morning, getting literature done for me. Wow. And I'm like, she's been dedicated and she's creative. She's mm -hmm. imaginative. She's um, energetic. Mm -hmm. She has great ideas, which she's helped implement into this campaign. Mm -hmm. um, not just in what she does, but she's got me into door doors where if she hadn't done the research mm -hmm. i wouldn't have known anything about you know she's got me into places mm -hmm. and she's pretty much kept me straight <laughs> and i also have to give a shout out to um my secretary my treasurer for the campaign my girls courtney stacy and kayla stacy they have been immeasurably valuable um to this campaign and keep help keep me straight um, like my literature, everything that I have for my campaign, you know, I leave it to the creatives, mm -hmm. you know, the artists 
in in my camp with your Tia and Kaylin. Mm-hmm. Um, my daughter Courtney, she keeps me straight. They keep me on my events that I have to go to. They keep me in the community. They walk with me when we have to canvas. Um, they've just given up so much of their time to walk with me and, and be with me and keep me company. And they made this whole process of um, running for office like enjoyable. That's great. <laughs> yeah. It's good it's good to have the kids around for certain things like that. Oh, they are learning so I, much. I just like, I love when kids start gravitating towards what adults do on a positive level. That's really good look for real. And um, I like to give a shout out to everybody who's tuning in to the Mark Ballot Show. Um, shout outs to Rat Fiend Radio, Pac-14, and everybody who's watching the Mark Ballot Show. And uh, any more shout outs you want to give out? Um, just to all the people who've encouraged me, all the people who've donated and co- contributed to the campaign, um, all the people who's given me advice, and I definitely have to give like um, a shout out for you know one of the other camps, um, Heather Missouri's deputy campaign manager mm-hmm. literally got in contact with me and just emailed me and he said, "What is it you need from us?" Okay, what we need to do is give out your email address and let everybody know how to contact for this specific field that you're doing. Right. Well, my information about me, a lot of it is on my Facebook um, page. So if you go to Lisa Walker Stacy, um, you can look at some of the places that we've been, some of the events that we've been, people we've been talking to. Um, and my email address is public. So it's Stacy underscore L underscore 99 at yahoo.com. And I just appreciate everybody that's had any part in helping us, you know, have a a good time with this. I appreciate I'm that's very appreciative. Yeah. Anything else that you want the public to know about the circuit court and what else like they can really tap into? Um, well, particularly for the circuit court because I'm not in there and know a lot of what other things that they do because mm-hmm. I gave a general um, synopsis of you know what the clerk of the circuit court does and I know like a lot of people when they might think of the circuit court court you know that, that word court mm-hmm. is um, probably kind of ominous because a lot of people think oh you know it's not a good thing mm-hmm. good connotation mm-hmm. but it, it's definitely part of just your everyday life because you know if you buy a sale property um even the taxes that you have to pay every year on your property um anytime you want to you know go fishing or hunting which you know i don't but a lot of people around here do that's where they have to go so it's a it's a place not just for um some negative connotation you you everyday life things you have to do you have Mm -hmm. to go to court to take care you know even your wills and your um you know, paperwork that you have to file for any court proceedings. It's pretty much taken care of there. Um, one of the things I do, I would like to say is, you know, definitely on this campaign, um, canvassing and trail and um, time that we're doing, mm-hmm. the young people, like I said, I see my girls are being exposed to things that they've never, you know, even dreamt of that because I hadn't. And the whole process of how this works Mm -hmm. and looking at the candidates doing what they do and how much is involved, I think the educational piece of being on this campaign Mm -hmm. is awesome. It's a life experience that, you know, a lot of kids would not be able to um, enjoy or Mm -hmm. be a part of. So I'm grateful, you know, that my two daughters are also along with me on this and they hear they see they participate Mm -hmm. um they're also talking to other candidates when we go because everyone's acknowledging them um everyone's acknowledging their efforts um so the educational piece of how this works i am so grateful that my girls you know one's 17 the other one's 20 are getting to experience this Mm -hmm. i understand Uh, yes what's that i have a 17 year old myself right Hey, Angel, love you. Um, oh, man, let's see. It's so much going on in this world. Hmm. I pray for everybody who's going through a difficult time in life. And I pray for the people who's being successful in life. It both 
comes together, you know, when you really look at it. And I just wish everybody the best. And I thank you all for tuning in. And um, be on the lookout for the dates to, you know, go register. If you're not registered to vote, go ahead and register yourself to vote because it's very yeah. important. Yeah, well, the dates for, um, for this gubernatorial um, election... The dates for getting registered, if you are not, have passed. Mm -hmm. That would have been um, October the 18th. So that's passed. You know, mm -hmm. if you're not registered already, you won't be able to vote on November the 8th. Mm -hmm. But on the 20, from October the 27th through November the 3rd, they do have um, early voting. So if people want to go ahead and, and vote during that time frame, you just have to find your early voting center location and then Absolutely. go. And I believe the hours are from... Um, I think it's 8 to 7, but you can definitely go to um, vote411.org. Of course, you can Google, you know, um, Maryland general election and get information on the dates, um, your polling places, even if you want to do mail-in ballots. That's something that you can just find out by, you know, researching. It's not um, hard to just quickly find the information you need so that you can actually vote if you're already registered because like the deadlines passed for mm -hmm. getting getting registered that's really good information very informative episode i will call this right here <laughs> the election edition of the mark ballot show so that's what it is that is it for the mark ballot show uh like i said i have special guest lisa stacy uh She's doing her thing. Y'all follow her and what she's doing. And we out, y'all. Peace. Peace and blessings. Thank you.